Welcome, and thanks for the opportunity to speak about our company, its products and its services. Above NV is a drone data company focused on data collection, analysis, and report for a wide variety of industries. We use unmanned aerial vehicles, often called UAVs or drones. We often hear that the drone industry is disruptive, and there's a lot of talk about drone delivery, cloud seeding, surveillance, and a bunch of other future tech possibilities. Above NV is focused on what drones are doing right now. These are the services that blue collar unmanned aerial vehicles are providing. We provide services, equipment, and consulting with UAVs for various industries and agencies at a fraction of the cost compared to the current data collection procedures they're using. All land managers need to know what's on their land now and for future planning and development. We provide the tools to do that from the air, turning what's information on the ground into three-dimensional, highly precise maps. When we talk about maps, we're talking about point clouds, lots of information all on one uh, big digital surface. But the current data collection in this realm requires either ground crews, manned aircraft, or satellite data. This can be problematic because those are either inaccurate, expensive, or inefficient. Let's lay this out so we can see it. Satellite data can be free if you go to Google Maps, but specialized cameras on specific orbits may be needed. Altering a satellite's orbit isn't cheap. The bigger problem, though, is the resolution a satellite-based map provides. At 12 inches per pixel, give or take, there simply isn't enough resolution to get detailed information about what's on the ground, so the resolution is a challenge. Manned aircraft, such as helicopters and small Cessnas, are expensive. Keep in mind, you have to have a pilot, fuel cost, insurance, and the altitude they have to fly at very big and expensive cameras. Go ahead, build your own airplane and see how easy that is. Ground crews are extremely useful, but their range is limited. They can only collect one point at a time, and they're limited to the personnel's capabilities. Once a sample area is surveyed, information about the rest of the property is estimated, so this is highly inaccurate. Remember the saying about garbage in, garbage out for data. So, we have a gap, and that gap is being filled by drones. We use both fixed-wing and multi-rotor drones. A slow-flying, fixed-wing aircraft can capture data resulting in 5 centimeters or 2 inches per pixel. Super-slow, flying multi-rotor drones can get down to the 1 or 2 centimeter per pixel range. This allows for three-dimensional results and it is extremely high-grade data. Because we do build most of our own drones, our costs are relatively cheap compared to satellites and manned aircraft. We need to pay our personnel to be out there, and there are some professional requirements, but not a lot. The rules we have to live by are changing for better as we speak, and that leads us to the area of how much we can cover in one day. At this point, a multi-rotor crew can cover about five square miles in a day, depending on the required resolution. The fixed wing can cover about 15 miles per day, uh, co providing 2 inches per pixel resolution. By next year, we'll have permission to fly beyond line of sight from a moving vehicle at night and in swarms. This will allow us to cover more ground. So there you go. We've solved the accuracy problem, we've solved the price problem, and we've solved the efficiency problem. And each of these will improve as regulations are defined and the technology improves. But wait, there is more. We've got to talk about our sensors and our data collection practices, which have brought in a whole new capability as far as making maps. Because we fly so low, and because we use a variety of different sensors, we can provide a number of different advanced outputs, such as three-dimensional maps and virtual environments. We use high-tech sensors like near-infrared, hyperspectral, LIDAR, to provide detailed, statistically-based uh, maps for things like Precision agriculture showing crop health, volumetrics showing, for instance, how much ore we have in this tailings pile, and vegetative analysis showing fire fuel levels in sensitive range habitats. We do analysis on the data we collect and provide it to the customer with actionable information which improves their business. When we fly, we take hundreds and hundreds of high resolution pictures. And if you look at them individually, they don't add up to much. But combining them all allows us to make a high-resolution, multidimensional map. These maps are three-dimensional, 
and we can look at a point cloud which is hundreds of pictures all put together to see things about the elevations. Take for example these rocks. As we look at this rock formation we can see from a top-down view and two-dimensional of what the rocks are. We can take a pretty good look at those plants as well. But as we look at it in a three-dimensional point cloud, we can actually look at the details on the sides of the rocks. This is from taking a lot of pictures from a lot of different angles. And we could actually carve this out and put it in a 3D printer and make a copy of the rocks if we wanted to. In a nearby area, we can zoom in and look at some data collected so we can actually look at the different plants. And we can zoom in and see what those plants look like and what species they are. Because we've merged so many high resolution pictures together, we can actually look at very close up or we can actually look at a three dimensional model of the same area. Zooming in and around on this little test plot shows us that we can measure the actual height of each plant. This is important and it's cap we're capable of it because we can fly so low. In this point cloud of a dam on the Truckee River, we'll show an example of assigning measurements to various elevations in a two-dimensional map. First, we create a three-dimensional map and then we create a digital elevation file. Let's take a minute and talk about near-infrared and NDVI. We can't see it, but plants reflect different levels of near-infrared wavelengths based on how much chloroplast is in the leaves. Healthy plants reflect more infrared. Unhealthy plants absorb infrared. We can use near-infrared and precision agriculture to spot areas where plants are withering two to three weeks before a farmer can see it with his naked eye. NDVI, or Normalized Differential Vegetative Index, separates the data into numeric values and assigns colors to areas where plants have low or high wave reflection rates. For fun, let's use a golf course to demonstrate this. This is one of our favorite holes at Toyabe Golf Course down in Washoe Valley. Check it out. You can actually see a golf ball right here. And we can flip through infrared, RGB, and NDVI uh, back and forth to give you an idea of what we're talking about. Now these are all grasses, but we can see areas of plant versus not plant quite clearly. And different species of plant will have different characteristics that we can use to classify a varied plant community. This is a former burn site up in northern Nevada. You can see with RGB that each plant has some different colors, so we can look at the pixels for each color. We can look at near-infrared, which is blue here. We can look at NDVI, and we can look at plant height to figure out a bunch of different things and basically ask the data questions about what we're looking at. We can plot and combine each one of these values to come with, up with individual signatures for each species given the values we've collected. The combination of all this allows us to put together a detailed report that says exactly what the habitat's all about. That does away with the need for laborious and estimate uh, on transects done by live humans that can be wrong or just not cover enough ground. For sagebrush ecosystems, this is enormously important for habitat management and invasive plant species control. There are a great many more things that we can provide as products and deliverables, and as I mentioned earlier, there are a lot of things on the forefront, such as drone delivery and all those other fun things. As system integrators, Above NV provides end-to-end -end solutions specific to customer needs, from flight planning to the final report. But drones are not the product here. It's important to point out it's the analysis, the report, the actionable information is the product. Our aircraft are many and each is designed to satisfy specific mission requirements. We have a variety of post-processing capabilities that focus our efforts specifically on the end result. Our product is the result, not the tools we use or the process. At the end of the day, our most important products are expertise and information. So I'd love it if you could give me a call. I'd be happy to answer questions, and I hope we can help you out. Again, 
My name's Kirk. I'm from Above NV, and thanks for your time listening to this presentation.